Hello all you beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. This here is going to be a power torque capability test on the Bego T4. I am also going to be comparing it to the Bigode Master, the Kingsung S22, the Bigode Hero, the Kingsung S18, and the RS19. All of those wheels, suspension and not, I have taken up this same road and the single track bike tracks that are off of this kind of old forest road and I have a lot of thoughts and comparisons to all of them including the power, the torque, the comfort, and just the overall capabilities of the wheel, including the suspension. So without further ado, let's get into it. One of the first things I'd like to mention is the pads on this wheel. For street riding, I was under the impression between the brake and the power pad was too wide, and in my opinion, it still kind of is. However, off-roading, going up the hill, it is very, very easy to lean into those pads. They do hold you very well, and they work very well. When you're going down steep inclines, the brake pads are there. They're really easy to lean against, and they do a really good job at holding you and letting the wheel brake properly. This road is absolutely horrible. I hate it, but for all intents and purposes, I like to take all of my wheels on the, this road to test, you know, how easily they will lose traction, how much they handle over the large pieces of loose shale, rock, dirt, dust, and how well they do up these inclines. So for starters on the suspension, because this is the part of the trail that is the harshest on these wheels that I really don't care to ride. The S22 was absolutely horrible. I tried adjusting that several times, stopping on this trail, making adjustments and going. You can see how bad it is here. And that wheel sucked. The Hero, you felt like you were going to get bounced off the pedals. Worse than the S22, but... You know, in comparison to the two, I wouldn't like to take either one on a trail like this out of the box, period. As far as the RS-19s go, I wouldn't even put them in a category with the suspension wheels. Plain and simple. The Master, however, because of the faulty shock, it's really hard to compare, but it did well. Just not great. The T4 here is a little bit bouncy, but I haven't had enough time to kind of fine-tune the suspension. I'm 220 pounds, the shock's filled to 200, it's about 12 clicks, I believe, from slow on the rebound, but you can see my knees there, you know, it's, it's taken a lot, but it is very bouncy, so I, I feel like any wheel, except for my Hero with the 650-pound coil on it now, it isn't going to take up a trail like this very easily. You're still going to feel a lot of it no matter the suspension. So moving on to, you know, overall traction and performance of the wheels. I swapped, you know, my S18s over to a TR1. I swapped over my RS19 high torques to a TR1 knobby tire. The Master and the Hero both come with a CST-186, and this wheel comes with a hybrid tire of sorts. I know it's a CST, I believe, I just don't know which model. And for traction and maneuverability agility, the TR1s are an amazing tire, as long as you don't fill them crazy high PSI. The CST-186s on the Master and the Hero do a really good job. You do have to air them down. I think I rode both those wheels at 28 PSI on this road, and they do a pretty good job. Never skipped, never lost traction. You know, good, good performing tires. 
This tire here, unfortunately I didn't think of it ahead of time because I do not typically ride street tire style tires on my wheels. I had it at 35 PSI and it was probably half the reason on why this wheel was so bouncy on that looser, chunkier stuff in the road. It did not have any problems as far as being able to overcome thick, loose gravel at Miller, Sylvania, which was the trail in my last video. It went through larger, looser gravel and had zero issues, and it went up this hill with all of that loose shale, the dust, the, dust, the dirt, the smaller gravel. It had no problems. So this is a really nimble tire, a very capable tire, and I really like it so far for what I've put it through. It is a very, very round profile, so it's it, it makes the wheel feel very nimble, but it could also feel very unstable if there's too much pressure put into it and you're not used to a tire like this. So for trails like this, you know, I would definitely air this particular tire down to about that 28 PSI or so, like I did with the CST 186s. Coming up is, you can see I lost traction there. This wheel has an incredible amount of power. I came to a near stop back there, if you didn't see that, and without even having to lean into the pads, I was able to get up and go without a problem. Taking the S18s up this, obviously they're a little bit slower going. You know, you really feel like you have to lean into them, but they're quiet, they don't hesitate, and they go taking the RS19s up this, I absolutely hated those wheels. They grunted, they moaned, they made a weird grinding noise, you know, even with better pads on them, unless you get to like 10, 12 miles an hour, there's just a lot of hesitation with those wheels. The Hero is kind of a midpoint between this wheel and the RS19s. At low, low speeds, it grunts, it kind of hesitates, but it has the power. It's a very torquey wheel. It had less problems, but it did better than the RS19s and it did better than the S18s. The S22, again, without proper pads on that wheel, it is extremely hard to extract the torque and power out of that wheel. I did update the wheel and take it down the trail as well, and I saw no difference in it. You know, slap the stock pads back on up the Velcro, and the wheel just sucks. You put some good pads on it, you get to lean into some nice, comfortable pads, and you can get very smooth power band and a lot of it out of an S22. So keep in mind, for $1,000 more than this wheel, you do have to throw some good pads on that wheel to make it better, in my opinion. The Master. That thing ate everything I threw at it. I had the P42 Molly Cell Edition, and that thing was an absolute powerhouse. Any steep trail, any time I needed to fastly accelerate, it just went. You know, you didn't even need pads on it. They obviously made it feel more comfortable, a little bit more steady and safe, but the wheel had zero problems. This wheel has zero problems. A couple of times on the steepest parts of this hill, you'll kind of see me slow down a lot, almost to a stop, and then speed back up. All of this footage is in real time. None of it is slowed down or sped up. And when I took it up more of the forest road style part, I noticed that I was able to just put a little bit more pressure in the pads of my feet and just go. I didn't even have to lean into the stock pads. So on the steeper parts of the trail, I was like, you know what, I'm going to stop or almost stop and then go to accelerate and see what happens. This wheel is extremely, extremely quiet, period. There's no hesitation, there's no grunting, there's no whining noises, it just goes, pads or not. It's almost like the master in feel, in my opinion, but a lot smaller and lighter, a lot more nimble with this tire on it. 
as you can see from the backside here, those brake pads are about half as wide as my legs, my calves. So four stock pads on any wheel, these are the best pads I have ever had the chance to use on a new wheel. You know, the hero pads are second to none compared to this. The master pads, eh, they kind of sucked. The S22 pads, jump pad was really good. It bruises the crap out of your ankle. The upper power and brake pad, absolute garbage. The pads that came with the RS19 were so ridiculous I didn't even put them on there. The S18s, I don't even think they come with pads. You know, they, they have whatever that foam is built into them, but you can't really consider that a power pad, brake pad, side pad, or anything. So for, you know, overall performance at the price point of this wheel, I have zero hesitation telling anybody to buy one. For 23, 22, 23, maybe 2400 bucks. Not sure what each distributor is selling it at exactly. It is significantly better than RS19. It is definitely smoother and has more power than a Bagode Hero. It has smoother suspension travel and a lot more easily uh, extracted power. It it's smoother. It's quieter. You know, it's it's no master but it's also not the price point up there with the master. When you're comparing it to a hero, you know, I think the heroes drop down like 3200 bucks or something now. I would still get one of these just because that hero, I swear on my life is heavier than a master. Very very nice looking wheel, very comfortable wheel, capable wheel, but for its price point, it's kind of a dead wheel. They don't even think they make it anymore. Comparing it to an S22, you know, and, until I do range on this wheel, I would honestly ride this wheel more than I would my S22 at this point. It does have the small pedals. I have put some miles on this wheel. And the one thing I did notice about this wheel compared to the Master, the Hero, and the S22 is my feet are always centered on the pedals. This wheel is very well balanced. It's very stable. It's very easy to get on and go, stop and hold up. The Master Hero and S22, I have to, what is the word I'm looking for here? My feet are always forward. Somebody pointed it out in one of my videos, I think in the Hero a long time back, saying, why are you ride with your feet so far forward? Same thing on the Master, same thing on the S22. Because the weight of those wheels and just the overall center of gravity or balance on them, in order to feel like you could really get the power out of them, you either have to move the pedals forward on the S22 or kind of stand more forward on the pedals on the other two wheels. This wheel, I stand dead center and I feel comfortable. I feel like I don't need to shift my feet around. I feel like the power is there. I need to put a little bit of weight into the pads of my feet, the wheel goes. I don't need to stand off the front of the pedals to get that. So all in all, being a 220 pound rider, this wheel conquered all of that trail behind me without problems. And it did so very comfortably, and it did so, you know, without any kind of hesitation or grunting. There was no pedal dipping, it just performed. So I hope that you guys kind of grasped what I feel about this wheel and that I don't believe it's easy to overpower and that it lacks power. If you have any questions, you want me to try to put it through some other tests, please do let me know. I hope that you guys enjoy the content. I try to get two videos out a week. I appreciate everyone who watches. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video and have a beautiful day, you beautiful people.